Pack your bags, Teresa. We're going to the Gulf Coast. Alabama. You got that right. <laughs> you guys know Teresa and I love traveling, which is why we couldn't be more excited about our new sponsor, Spectrum Resorts. They have two incredible properties on the Gulf Coast, so you can get away from it all at either the Beach Club or Turquoise Place. And right now, get $200 off your stay at either resort by booking directly through Spectrum Resorts using promo code POD1. That's P-O-D and the number one. Book the Beach Club for a relaxing, safe, and secluded beach resort vacation or Turquoise Place and experience the epitome of luxury with hot tubs and grills on every balcony along with a lazy river and other world-class amenities. You'll love the best time at either resort with dining, shopping, resort-style pools, plus organized activities and so much more. Doesn't this sound amazing, guys? Amazing, Teresa. Just make sure you book directly through Spectrum Resort for amazing perks at either property, including discounts on dining, spa, treatments, and more. Plus, at Turquoise Place, you'll even get complimentary breakfast, which is a big savings for families. It sure is. So check out beachclubal.com or turquoiseplace.com to book your vacation using promo code POD1 for $200 off your next stay at either resort. That's $200 off your next stay using promo code POD1. Again, that's P-O-D and the number one. We'll also put the links in the show notes. And thank you again to Spectrum Resorts for sponsoring this podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. Every check Christmas, I give her the same advice Baba gave Johan. Be careful with those fish bones. <laughs> it's the one and only Carpy and Teresa. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Cops are the best. Carp. Oh, boy. Carps. Cops are, are good, too. Cops are good. We're getting real political <laughs> at, the, at the top of the show. Uh, well, carp. Here's the thing. When I say we eat carp for Christmas, 99.9% of Americans are like, what? Mm. And they have to be like carp, C-A-R-P, the fish, the fish that you guys don't think it's good, but it's delicious. And then people are like, oh. Well, there's just too many bones in the carp. It's a. Uh, but the carp is so good. Is it delicious? It's very good. And you know, I don't love fish. Carp is my favorite fish. What's so good about it? What does it taste like? It's a white fish. How is it prepared? Besides, uh, don't say in a bathtub. We bake because- it. You put herbs you on it. it. You, yeah, you bathe you, it, Teresa. Well, we bathe it and then we bake it. You put herbs on it and lemon and you squeeze la- lemon juice on it too. Mm. It's, it's just very good. You should try next time. <laughs> I think it's picking up some flavors from the old bathtub. It does not. Mm. You clean the carp. It must be good because it's a lot of work. It is a lot. All it the, is a lot of work. All the bones. All that goes into it, all that comes out of it. I've never had it, just because the whole idea of it's off-putting. From the from the bathtub to the dining table. It's a tasty white sweet water fish. Okay. When you say bathtub and sweet water in the same sentence, it, it does not. You know that sweet water appetite. means like a pond and lake? Does it? Yeah. There's sweet water beer. I always wondered where that came from. Okay. Sweet water. Okay. And bathtub, well, that's, I guess that's sweet water too. When's the last time your parents put a carp in the bathtub? Uh, I think last year. That's really concerning. You, you, you were in that bathtub recently. That's the bathtub? Do you see any other bathtub? I'm kidding. <laughs> so it's not the bathtub. No. They kept it in a, in like a, um, like a barrel or some, some kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's fine. That, that, a fish tank. A fish tank. That's fine. People are putting their actual fish <laughs> in their actual bathtub. Yeah. That concerns me. They would have, but they didn't because they both are kind of banged up and cannot really walk up the stairs. Yeah. And my bathroom with the bathtub is up the stairs. So Got that's it. that's what stopped them. Ooh, that, <laughs> <laughs> I was all over that bathtub this past trip. So. <laughs> John finally learned how to use the Czech bathtub. Guys, just so you know, because it took me, this is my fifth time, fourth time in? Yeah, something like that. It took me until this trip to come to terms, I guess to just 
understand. I was very proud of you for not drowning the bathroom anymore. So most, most Czech people sit in the bathtub and shower. Yeah. They don't sit in the bathtub and bathe. They sit in the bathtub and shower. You can bathe too. Sure. That would, yeah. that would make more sense. But yes, I just thought your, because your bathroom is almost attic-like. There's a, there's a, it is. My room is in the attic. So. Yeah. So there's this angle to the ceiling. And I thought, well, this was the only option. You can't have a stand-up. No. You can't have a stand-up shower up here. So you have the shower head, no. but you sit. Most Czech people yeah. sit in the bathtub. Yeah, but we have like taller bathtubs. So like in America, you it don't is taller, get. Yeah. yeah, you don't get. It's probably three feet tall, I would say. It's probably... Yeah, three, three. Yeah, and you can bathe in it. You can do whatever. I used to spend hours in there just laying down, smoking cigarettes, having my mom yelling at me from downstairs if I'm smoking cigarettes. Jeez. Because, like, there is a win- window right above me, so I always, like, yeah. cracked it open. And yeah. Like, I Man, just went right out. You were living your best life. Best life. But so my your mom parents, hated it. Your parents used to. Now they have a stand-up shower. They used to have a stand-up shower that's always been there. Oh, I always thought it was like so cool that my parents had a stand up shower. I thought you told me that your parents sat and bathed. Well, in our old apartment, oh. we bought the house when I was 18. So every morning, I'm just crossing my fingers that your dad showers every day. Every uh, night. Okay. Czech people shower at night. Okay. Well, I shower uh, both morning and night. So what's up, Czech? You're very clean. Um, Every night, your dad would get home from a long day of work. He would eat dinner. And then he would say, all right, I'm going to shower and go to bed. And he would go into the bathroom and sit down in the bathtub. Absolutely. And then look up as the shower just rained down on him. Absolutely. Every single day. Every single day. And it was a, you use the thingy to maneuver the shower. What do you call it? The, what do you call it? The, sh- it's a, the shower head? Yeah, the hose, the hose or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's extended. You can do that. And it was our only bathroom in the apartment. So, like, if you went to the toilet, it was in a different room and you wanted to wash your hands. You walked yeah. in on your dad oh boy. or on my mom. And I hope I'm not shower. <laughs> I'm not shower shaming here. I'm not trying to shower shame because you had the ability to have a stand-up shower. The mechanics are there. You have a shower. You just don't do it. You just don't do it. It's not a thing. Maybe like you know now, nowadays, nowadays people, I think nowadays like when people build houses or in the past 10, 15 years, like people do add stand-up showers. Yeah. As an addition to the bathtubs. You still want to have a bathtub. Let me ask you a very personal question. Okay. And this may say more about me than it will say about you. Okay. How do you wash your butt? In that situation. In what? When you're sitting in a bathtub, but it's the, wa- but the water is but the water's not filling up the tub. Oh, it's even better. How, doggy style? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're being serious. How do you okay, you how get, do you go you get, cheek <laughs> cheek? How do you go cheek the shower head? <laughs> you get on your knees. You, uh, so I was right. You wash whatever you need and then you sit down and you just let the water go. Mm. All right. That's why it's so good. Well, thank you, Danielle, Johan, and Baba for getting us to this conversation. <laughs> I, I don't think we even talked about them. Oh, Start the car. with the carpet in the bathtub. Yeah. I mean, is this how you do it? Well, I'm not going to answer that. Oh, I answered. You answer. I lay on my back and put my feet behind my head. I don't. He does I not. Don't. There is no, no space for it. No. That's I, why I knew you're lying. I, I probably go days without a proper cleaning down there. <laughs> what? It's a whole thing. I just told you how to do it. Say it again. It's the best. Say it again. Get on your knees. Yeah. And then you just wash whatever you need to wash. And yeah. then you sit down. And you just let the water flow. Okay. All right. We, I think we should cut this out. No, we definitely need to move on. This is what our friends tune in for. They want to hear that that European... Lifestyle. I mean, it's the best. It sure is different. All right. Let's I, move on. I don't want to keep going, but I have some follow-up questions for you because I'm actually, st- I've struggled in the U.S. with the stand-up showers. I don't know how to do that. I still uh, don't. It's going to get way too personal. <laughs> we can talk about it later. We'll talk about it off the <laughs> mic. Can we move on? Yes. Real quick. We're on Instagram at Married Reality Pod. Message us there. Share your shower habits. 
let us know what you think about the episodes, the podcast, all good. Talk to us. Check out the memes. There's news. We have fun over there. So Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Also, join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. So much is happening over there, Teresa. What are we doing? We're doing... Darcy I don't and even Stacey. know so much. Darcy and Stacy. I don't want to know how they shower. I don't want to see them showering in Europe, but I can imagine how it would go. Brother husbands. Seeking brother husband. And then very soon, in a few weeks, actually, Love in Paradise. Yes. And guys, we're watching Love is Blind season four for pleasure. Oh, yeah. For fun. But we will be doing... The After the Altar as a bonus, yeah. again, as always. After the Altar will hit all tiers, starting yes. at Friends with Benefits, going up to Family Affair. The Darcy and Stacey and Seeking Brother Husband, that is at Cousins Club for audio yeah. only and Family Affair for audio video, plus the bonus that the yes. Family Affair gets every month. And actually, we yeah, we'll talk about it later, but we are loving the Love is Blind season, so oh. maybe we'll be an extra bonus on top of a bonus. Oh, you, Who take knows? It, you take it easy. Patreon.com. Slash married to reality. Also, just give us a follow wherever you're listening right now. It's so easy to do. Look down, smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's is hot. Is the pottery studio that gave to the kids too? Because it reminded me of last year when I myself took a pottery class and hope to make myself a nice mug and something fun, and I didn't achieve any of it because mm. it's harder than it looks. Sure is. And I didn't even make friends as I thought I would. All right. This is but that was a hot studio. That right. was a hot studio. Smash like it says, how's that pottery studio? And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. We love when you guys leave reviews. You can rate, you can review. If you write something, if you leave a five-star review on Apple and you write something, we'll read it on this podcast right here, right now. Yes. And I have one I would like to read. Ooh. Okay, can mm-hmm. I? This one comes to us from our friend Cabrita. Oh, uh, hello. Okay. Five stars. Love it. Titled love it. Woo! Teresa, are you reading the review or am I? Well, that's my that's my thing. I usually have a positive reaction, nice review. So okay. I said love it. Love, love it. it. The Double love uh, it. I heart emoji. Love it, love okay. it. Love you guys so much. I even joined the Patreon. <gasps> which is sad because it means Cabrita won't hear this probably. Um We'll, we'll re-say it at the end. So Yeah. Okay. Uh, love you guys so much. I even joined the Patreon. Please know that your hard work is appreciated and keep up the positive, wonderfully energetic pod. Ooh. Thank you, Cabrita. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. We we cut out all the housekeeping on, on the Patreon. Do we cut out our little chit chat at the beginning? No, no, I no, feel no. like we should, we should keep this one for the Patreon. No, we always do. Okay. We always, the opening, until I say... Let's do some housekeeping. Oh, okay. That's all in there. And then as soon as I say, all right, let's do some 90 Day By The Way, we come back. So the only thing we cut out for the Patreon, you, our Patreon friends, sorry to you guys, but they're the best, okay? And so they follow us on Instagram. They know to smash the follow button. So we just cut that out so they don't have to hear it. And you guys don't have to hear it if you join the Patreon at any level. And also it's ad-free on Patreon at yeah. any level. So if you say enough with the ads already, patreon.com slash married to reality. All right? All right. Thank you, Cabrita. Let's do a little 90 Day By The Way. You have some, John. See, and we're here back with the Patreon now. Oh, hello, Patreon friends. Hello, Patreon friends. Let's do some 90 Day By The Way. Number one, big news. Okay. Big news from Corey and Evelyn. <gasps> are they pregnant? No, but they are making something, creating something together. They are building, currently, a beachside resort in Ecuador. A beachside resort. Yeah, they've graduated from the beachside bar and are Mm. now dabbling in a beachside resort. Okay. All right. Corey just went on Instagram recently and he's saying, subscribe to my IG. Subscribe to my Instagram. Follow along because I'm going to be showing you guys a little behind the scenes of the process of building the resort. Mm. And throughout this process, subscribers will get a chance to win gifts and even win free stays at Ooh, the resort. We should do that. We should subscribe. We should probably subscribe. Uh, I might give it a shot. So if you guys are interested, be like Teresa and I will be. Subscribe. His name is a mouthful. I'm going to try to say it. Corey Rathgeber. Corey. This is one word. Corey and then R-A-T-H-G-E-B. 
E R. Just search Cody. I'm sure he'll yeah, he'll under, up here. Underscore ninety. Give him a subscribe if you're interested, and, and follow along. Check out the resort, the process, and potentially win something. Yeah, that's fun, right? Yeah, he does not sponsor us, by the way. We're just being nice. Not a sponsor. Just a good old ninety day. By the way. Yes. All right. By the way, number two, Gabe. Of this current season. Okay. I just discovered he has a pretty successful YouTube channel. Oh. Quite the YouTuber. Pretty 90 days successful? Sure is. He's been doing it for about five years. Oh, wow. The channel is his last name, Pagoba. Po, no, Paboga. P-A-B-O-G-A. Paboga. Mm-hmm. So it's a niche channel. Okay. Most of the videos are about his life as a transgender male. Mm-hmm. But there's... Seemingly a pretty big audience for this because his channel, as of when I'm looking at it, has over 32,000 subscribers. That's pretty good. He's been posting the videos for five years, as I said. And a lot of the videos, they're things like dating while trans, which bathroom do I use, other content like that. But then there's also some random videos like how much does wearing a dog shot collar hurt? Ah. Spoiler alert, a lot, he says. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, interesting. Yeah, so check it out if you want. Paboga, P-A-B-O-G-A is Mm. the YouTube channel. And as I said, it's a lot of content for the transgender community, but then there's also just random content too, which is interesting. And if you're a fan of Gabe, I'm sure you'd be a fan of this channel. I might check it out. So check it out. I checked it out. I feel like we all have a lot of questions that I have no one to ask, yeah. and I don't even thong, think I, I should be asking, right? No, you no, if, no, 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 you can ask questions. I think. But if he's posting about it and talking yeah. about it on his YouTube channel, I might yeah. just watch. Yeah, I think I think you can ask questions as long as they're respectful. I mean, don't ask strangers, but if you had, well, that's what I meant. And I, I so. you know, I don't really know anyone. My mom does. I talked Your mom about does. it last oh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah her maybe, ad, you should, so. maybe you shouldn't ask questions. I don't know. I don't know. That's my thing. But I would. I do have questions, so maybe I'll check out the YouTube channel. He I might have, answer some for me. I have questions on whether you should ask questions. Hm. I have questions about that. There are so many rules in our nowadays society that I'm trying to follow, but I don't always That's follow through. The and, worst. Then, and then John is always like, oh, my God, did you really do that or say that? I'm like, what? Well, that's the worst part about the way society is moving is I feel like we're all getting dumber because we're scared to ask questions. It is. And it's like, I just saw this and this is super unrelated to 90, but I just saw an article about like how Jennifer Aniston is saying like that people are judging friends. Like nowadays, mm. nowadays generation is saying, oh, friends was so offensive. Friends was so bad. I don't even think what kids nowadays think about the office, but like she That's goes, but she was so saying good. it's like, but it wasn't back then. Like, right. just think about you it. You can't like, take things out of context. Exactly. And so she was kind of like, oh, uh, well, but when we did friends, they don't feel offensive. It wasn't right. offensive. Right? So you can't really judge it. And it's so true. Like nowadays you have all these rules that you don't want to offend anyone. I never want to offend anyone. No. However, do I sometimes say something oh, yeah. that could possibly offend someone? Yes, but I don't mean it. And it's because of all these rules. That's why I think intent is so important. Like what's your intention? Are you honestly curious and want to better yourself and understand if so, then I feel like you should be able to ask the questions. But again, I don't know. I don't make the rules. I just break them, Teresa. Well, you don't. I do. You sure do. All right. That's 90 Day, by the way, before we get ourselves into any that more trouble. That's pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Shall we do it? Shall we talk about the reason we're here? Yeah, let's do it. Sunday <laughs> night, 90 Day Fiance, the other way. Season four, episode nine. Oh, wow. It's it's flying by. It really is, right? This mm-hmm. season's fantastic. It's a good season. It's a good it's, season. Yeah. Unlike, unlike, um, I'm gonna. I hate to say this, but guys, unlike Mavs, like Ooh. they need to, they need to pick it up. All right. But this well. season, this season is saving us all. I actually don't think Mavs is that bad. It's not that great, but I don't think it's bad. Oh, it's bad. Really? I, I and it's like I, I love talking about it with you, but like watching it, it's like, I don't know. Like I love the previous season. Boston with Lindsay, Marcus gold, yeah. gold. Yeah. Oh, like it's just this season that's just we can make fun. Like I enjoyed chatting about it, but like watching it, I'm like waiting for something to happen, and mm. it's like 
nothing's happening. See, maybe, okay, so it's different. I'm liking it because I think we're actually having, because there's not any laugh out loud moments, really, I think we're having more intellectual conversation. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Teresa? I think All we're right. actually, we're, we're going deeper and we're, I Ooh. think we're getting below the surface and I don't know. I find it fun to talk about. Oh, I, listen, if I didn't find fun in talking about this, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. So okay. many times I like this more than actually watching the shows, but oh, always. not 90, <laughs> not 90. It's a kind of like equal, love watching, love talking about it. Love watching the sisters, love talking about it. So let's them. talk about it already. Let's do it. Let's do it. Danielle and Johan. Uh, Shout yeah. out to production for just trolling Johan with this opening scene of just fly covered chicken b-roll Ooh, right john is like well this might be colombia i'm like no it's not it's dominican republic and it was just because of that one shot i'm like they're definitely uh, doing that's this that's a choice that's a, and i don't know if they were saying look at this it is normal, normal. yeah absolutely if it's normal or if they're like remember when johan had flies all over his meat no i think they're showing no, it to, they were to saying, normalize look at this it. this is normal yeah yeah so we see this apartment we see the apartment johan rented for Danielle and himself. It looks good. Danielle's happy with it for yeah, now. Yeah, but uh, the bed is too big. So I think it's an Airbnb. You do? The way it was decorated, there's no way Johan went in there and put up surf. It was very mahogany. It was very, this was lived in. This was a beachside rental. There was surf art on the wall. Well, there are some apartments that you can rent decorated. Fully furnished. Yeah, fully furnished. So that could have been it because she wasn't bringing any furniture and he lives with his parents. So maybe they were going for that. Maybe it's an Airbnb. But here's the thing. With an Airbnb, like you pay monthly and it includes the electricity and everything. With an Airbnb? Yeah. Okay. Like you don't, if you rent an Airbnb, you they give you, oh, you pay $500 a week, for example, and it includes everything, even long-term rentals. So they wouldn't lose power because of that. That's a really good point. So, yeah, fully furnished. Maybe they yeah. rented. I thought maybe Airbnb as well because she didn't go in there and immediately sage the place. So I thought, okay, there's like a no smoking. Oh, I think she saged it. We I think she it. saged it, yeah. Sage the best for last. We didn't see it. Um, what we did see is them Skype Baba and Jessica because Danielle wants to get spiritual with Johan. Yeah, and it's like, he's not into that. Like You can try because it's fine. He tried, but you can make him get into this if he doesn't want to. Like, he has his own religion. He he believes in Jesus, whatever that is, Christian, one of the Christians. (laughs) There is a lot of guys. I don't don't, don't Um, fully get it. But I am actually somewhat proud of Johan because I would not allow it to go this far if it was me. Yeah, I'm proud of him for not laughing that high. You could tell that he's like laughing with his eyes. Oh, yeah. But like he kept it cool. So like the whole thing is Baba. And again, not shitting on anyone's religion, but come on. Baba drops a chain and picks it up and drops a chain and picks it up. And however the chain falls determines the advice that Baba gives. It's literally like me being drunk, trying to remove a necklace and then picking up, picking it up from the floor a few it's, times. It's very much like that. <laughs> so the the reading that Baba gets is to realize life is sweet, try to taste the sweet things, but also be careful of your throat, be careful eating fish bones, and also be careful with the mushrooms. Yeah, like my favorite things, mushrooms, I, I eat any mushrooms, from magic mushrooms to mushrooms on pizza. You have I'm, not eaten magic no, mushrooms. No, I'm kidding. You go, without me, Theresa? I'm kidding. But I'm saying like, I love Mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Mushrooms are the bomb. Carp is the bomb. So I don't know. Baba, Baba's reading would not work for me. <laughs> it didn't really work for Johan either. He's like, this advice is a little weird. It's a little strange. Not really sure how this brings me closer to God. But he's going with it, which again, I give him credit for because well, I would be like, you know what? You can do it. But, oh, yeah, I would not do it. But keep me out of it. And it's like, He's like, how is this going to bring me closer to God? It's like, well, it's a different God. Like, this is a whole, this is a very different religion. I don't even think that's what he's, what Baba's trying to do to bring you closer to God. I, I don't know. You're what, supposed to like get more in touch with your inner self. It is. Yeah. It's more like spiritual. Yeah. And, and so 
Poor Johan, he doesn't even understand what's going on. He's not alone. So they hang up. Johan's like, WTF was that? I think Baba seems like a nice guy, but I'm not on board with his religion. I'm not ready to abandon my religion that I grew up with. And right then, power goes off. Yeah, and Daniel was like, you see, God. And Johan was like, no, you you have to pay the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't that cool. He was like, oh, actually, he was fine. It was Danielle who lost her shit. And she's like, huh? You knew we wouldn't have electricity and you didn't pay the bill? Well, he has nothing. To, he has no money. Like, he doesn't make enough money to pay for any of this. Do you buy this electricity going out? I I, I do hard- because, like, I almost, this is what I think happened. Because first, his first reaction was, like, that's Dominican Republic. I think they literally lost power. I thought it was power and, outages. Yeah. And I think then he kind of, like, to make it more interesting, added, like, well, you have to pay for electricity, but I think they lost power. I think they lost. Yeah, right. I don't think it was, oh, we didn't pay the bill. Like, on the first day, you would lose power. That's what I'm saying. Why would you have it for half the day? Yeah, but and then, I, again, I don't know how it goes in the DR. Or they could have easily blown a fuse with all of the production there, plugging in the lights, the yeah. camera. Like, maybe they blew a fuse. They're not used to having that much yeah. going. But, I, yeah, I don't think it was a matter of paying the bill. Yeah, maybe. But- I still think it was an Airbnb, but... You make a good point. So then, new day, big day. It's the one year me anniversary of Johan and Danielle. And so, help me understand because they're in the car and she's like, Well, I want to go out to have a drink at a restaurant tonight and maybe like have some um, dancing or music, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then they go to a restaurant and have a beer. Right. That's not the, the celebration, right? I think it's a day long celebration. Okay. And yes. Johan is not as celebratory as Danielle is. Johan thinks there's some things we need to work on. Primarily the way you express yourself. You're getting a little too emotional. I think you can work on that. And Danielle's like, well, it's interesting that you're bringing up things that we can work on because I have some things you could work on. How about you accept that I'm friends with men? And this starts an interesting debate, Teresa. Yes. One that we're going to have right here, right now. All right. It might be over before we even start because I don't know where your head's at on this. But the whole... This Real whole, quick, who yeah. do you think is right, Daniel or Johan? For which part? For the part that uh, basically when Johan says you shouldn't be friends with your ex. Well, that's what I want to okay. debate with you. So it's not just being friends with the opposite sex. It's being friends with your ex. Yeah. and. Danielle has this friend. His name is Talon. He's in the DR and they used to date. They don't anymore, but they've stayed friends and he wants to hang out and grab lunch while he's in town. Well, it took her forever to say they dated. She's like, we lived together, but like, well, it's like, what are you saying? You lived together and banged? Like, but this doesn't yeah, sound any better. With benefits. Yeah. Um, and Johan is not on board with this because they do have a romantic past and Danielle doesn't see the issue. Okay. Let's do it at the same time on three. Mm-hmm. Is it okay to be friends with your ex? Okay. I'm, it's going to be one, two, three, and then answer. Okay. Is it okay to be friends with your ex? One, two, three. No. no. Okay. Of course. <laughs> There's just no reason to hang no with reason. the ex. Now, is it okay to be friends with the opposite sex? Of course. Yeah. I don't mind. Like, I don't mind if you are friends with girls. You know, I have some guy friends. But yeah, they're guy friends I've never had any roman- romantic relationships with. Sure. Because that's what makes us friends. I sure. don't think, I don't believe, and this is maybe you guys will have a different opinion, but I don't think you can be friends with your ex. I don't think so. I mean, uh, I th- no, no, listen. I think you can be. And I think you probably could be with no problem if you were single or if both of you were single and you said, you know, it didn't work out. As a relationship, but we still have good times together. Let's hang out. No harm, no foul. But when you have a current partner to hang out with your ex, it's just what's the benefit? You're only going to hurt what you currently have because every time you hang out with that person, oh, are you more attracted to this person? Do you wish you were still with them? Do you regret splitting up? There's there's too much baggage. Again, I don't believe that exes can be friends. I think you can be friendly. I feel like if you meet 
somewhere randomly you can exchange a conversation if you yeah. share a kids or a custody of kids you can be friendly you can get along nice but i don't believe you should be buddies i don't think you should be hanging out grabbing beers going right. out like i don't believe that because why like why, you yeah. you broke up for a reason because you just weren't getting along or one did but, something so it, why would you why would you want to put yourself through oh but let's be friends if, if that didn't work out in the first place. And what you said is so key. One did something. Yeah. Uh, no breakups are mutual. And so yeah. one may still want to be with the other. And that's where the real trouble is going to start. Because it's not two people who are over it. And, eh, well, we can at least be friends. It's like, no, one person is upset that you guys are no longer together. And that could cause some toxicity within your current relationship are you friends with any of your exes no they're exes exactly they're now yeah i don't need to get well i don't need to get who tell me not not a not an ex but say you had a a high school friend who you had a crush on okay right i'm not even friends with any of them but that i could see like you have your friend circles you had a crush on a girl in high school nothing ever happened you never dated but like okay. oh I've, I've always had a crush on this girl you grow out of it you move on nothing ever happened between you two i think it's okay to remain friends you crushes are limited time only are they i think so that's why it's a crush you're not in love with the person it's a crush you're a little crush i guess if you had a crush on someone you're 17 now you're 30 something years old i think you could hang out with them if I went to a bar, if we went home for Thanksgiving and there was a girl that I had a crush on in high school, you think that'd be so awful if we all hung out together? Oh. Uh, I don't think uh, so. It would be a little weird. Maybe. If she's like married with kids and I would be like, sure. And nothing, but if she's single, I would but be nothing like, ever, And nothing ever no. happened. I just put a couple of away messages about her, a couple of John Mayer lyrics, and like, that's it. But like <laughs> nothing ever happened. We never hooked up. We never kissed. I just, you know, I had eyes for her when I was 16. Now... 20 years later, I don't think it's yeah, that. Yeah, you might still have eyes for her. I don't think it's that. Like, if I met your high school boyfriend, I don't think it'd be that weird. I mean, this is your high school Oh, no, boyfriend. it wouldn't be weird That's at all. That's what I'm saying. Because, like, high- we, we would have breaking up every two weeks. But it's your high school but boyfriend. I don't, yes, because There's I don't see there. that as a relationship. And neither do I when I'm talking about a crush. And this is, like, a hypothetical. I don't even really have that okay. in, my, in my life. I think you do, but that's No, fine. I do, but I'm saying we're not friends. We don't <laughs> hang out. We don't Are associate. Are you friends on Facebook? Um, probably, oh. probably, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I think we should take a break. Yeah, I think let's let's talk offline. No I'm right. kidding. <laughs> let's take a quick break. We're gonna tell you about one of our sponsors, and then we'll be back in a second. We'll be back, guys. I'm super excited about our new sponsor for the pod. You guys know that John hates when I talk about working out, but it's a big part of my lifestyle. Well. Something else has become a part of that lifestyle, and it's called Fit Aid Energy Drinks. I'm actually drinking the blackberry pineapple right now, and I could try to describe how good it is, but right now you can actually save 40% of your first order of 24 cans of Fit Aid Energy plus free shipping. Wild! So you can try it for yourself. You guys just need to visit www.drinkfidei.com slash married to reality. One more time. www.drinkfidei.com slash married to reality. And make sure you put the www in the URL. And I'm looking at John and he's uh, he's also drinking a can of something delicious. You want to tell us about it, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, you actually just caught me mid-sip right there, Teresa. I am drinking the peach mandarin flavor. I think it's my favorite. It's refreshing. It's delicious. But the best part, all the flavors are 100% naturally sweetened with none of that gut-killing aspartame, no sucralose or ace K. Words I can barely say. Words I don't want to hear Teresa even try to say. <laughs> Plus, Fit8 Energy is packed with all the essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients you need after a workout, like branched-chain amino acids, glucosamine, electrolytes, turmeric, omega-3s, and vitamins B, C, D3, and E. And maybe my favorite part, Fit8 has 200 milligrams of clean caffeine from green tea. Clean caffeine from green tea, Teresa. <laughs> so I get the energy I need without any of the synthetic ingredients. I love that. Do you want to know what my favorite part is? I think I can guess, but tell me, Teresa. My favorite part is that Fit8 Energy is only 15 calories per can. And it comes in four very delicious flavors. 
including mango sorbet, yum, raspberry hibiscus, yum, and of course, peach mandarin and blackberry pineapple, yum, yum. So like Teresa said, right now we're giving our listeners 40% off your first order of 24 cans of Fit8 Energy plus that free shipping by going to www.drinkfitaid.com slash married to reality. Again, www.drinkfitaid.com slash married to reality. We'll also put the link in the show notes. So check it out. And thanks again to Fit8 for sponsoring this podcast. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Are well, you... we're gonna we're gonna compare oh, our Facebook friends and oh, oh boy. Uh, look at every every single lady you have in there. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Teresa, can we talk about Nicole and Mahmoud? Yes, can because we... this this is getting interesting. This is getting to the point where I'm like, I think they are a real couple because she's still there and she's trying to leave and they're not letting her leave and. There is something that's holding her there or holding her back. This, is yes. It, because it's not 90. She could have gone home like Jen did and they could have been dealing it with this whole thing from the U.S. Yeah, I also think it's a lot harder to just leave a country than you may make it seem. You may, you may say, I'm going to pack my bags and leave. Okay, well, it's not that easy just to no, get but- a flight out of there. When you don't know where you are, you don't know how to get to where you're going. So you're a little more, I don't want to say held hostage, but if I was in your hometown mm-hmm. and I, and we got into a fight, let's not even put this into the ether, but if we got into a fight and I was like, I'm leaving, I'm going back. You to, would not. I'm back. I'm going back to Florida. And you were like, all right, go. Well, I could probably buy the plane ticket just fine. But I don't know how I would get to the airport. <laughs> you would not. Right? <laughs> so I think you're a little more stuck than you think you are. I guess. That makes sense. So we pick up. They're, they're still fighting. Things have not improved between Nicole and Mahmoud since we last left them. Although, speaking of leaving them, Mahmoud just went home. He just left Nicole yeah. at the pool and was like, we'll see you later. Yes, and luckily for Ahmed, his brother, who he complained to when they get home, and Ahmed is like, you cannot just leave your wife there. We, <laughs> we got to go back. How insane. Like, then I would leave. I would find any way. If, if you left me or I left you at a pool in a foreign country, oh, that would be it. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be over, I think. Yeah. Yeah, luckily Ahmed's like, You can't just leave your wife at a hotel in a foreign country. Like, we need to go back and get her. Well, on one hand, she asked for it. So I guess uh, Mahmoud just did what she asked. But I would probably leave her for like 15 to 20 minutes. Just walk around the block. But come back. Pretend. Do the old, uh, uh, the the old, I'm running away from home. (laughs) You, You take an empty suitcase. You walk to the end of the street and you come back. Yeah, you you do that here. You don't actually go home. Yeah. Mahmoud. Well, he did. And luckily, Ahmed is like, absolutely fucking not. Like, she's your wife. You got to get her back home. Yeah. This this guy is a saint. Every relation needs an Ahmed. Oh, he is he. He's the one who suggested to hide her passport. So. Oh, was he? I'm pretty sure it was him. Oh, he's making up for it. So (laughs) he's just. Listen, he, he doesn't give a shit about Nicole or, or Mahmoud, but he cares about the relationship. Oh, he does care about Mahmoud as his brother. But he cares about the relationship not failing because it is his brother. And it's like, they don't do this. Like, you don't just let go. Like, well, she, he, she needs to, in his eyes, she needs to learn and obey the religion she converted into and he understands it might take some time. So he's trying to buy it out the time, hoping she will learn and just does what's expected of her. Right. Mm-hmm. He he called Nicole his sister. And that was a turning yeah. point in the conversation where she felt like, OK, I'm not alone, which is crazy because up until that point, she's with her husband and feels alone. Yeah. She's in this foreign country. She feels like she has nobody. Finally, her husband, her brother-in-law comes up and says, no, you're like a sister. And she goes, oh, okay, I guess 
I do have somebody here. And that makes her change her approach or her feeling for a second. And Ahmed gets Mahmoud to go sit down with Nicole and is like, say hi to your wife, stupid guy, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah. Say hi to your wife, stupid guy. Mahmoud's still being defensive. He's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. And you did. If nothing else, you left her yeah. and went home. So right there is doing something. And Nicole has every right to lose her shit. She actually doesn't. She's, no, the at. She stays cool. As long as Ahmed is sitting there. Yes. And Nicole says, okay, well, if we're going to be together, things need to change. I'd like to wear shorter sleeves. I'd like to not be so buttoned up. I just want a little bit of freedom. And it, I hate to say it is, but it, this is not his idea. This is the religion. This is the, what do you call What's the word? Um, culture. Yeah, that's the culture. He didn't make up these rules for you, Nicole. I know. These are the rules that you accepted when you married him. You converted to Islam. Oh my God, like you did. And she admits later that she did a lot of things she probably shouldn't have because she didn't research, but you did. And you basically told him by doing this, you said, well, I accept this culture and this lifestyle and this religion. And now she's like, oh, I want to wear a short sleeve and all this. Like, I feel you. I personally would want to, but I would not convert to a religion or marry someone and live in a place I don't want to live in. I would have thought twice about things, but she did not. So I have to be team Mahmoud. It's she should not. She should obey by the rules because first of all, it, she's going to be looked at like different. Like people are going to be like, what, what is she doing? Like, this is not okay. Uh, she might offend people by doing this. She might offend women. So it's really interesting to be watching this storyline right now, because I don't know if you heard about the two women who were just arrested in Iran. No. So two Iranian women were arrested like yesterday, re very recently because they went out into town without their hijabs on. Oh. And so they were at they were at this store, they weren't wearing hijabs. This guy walks by, sees them, takes yogurt off the shelf, throws yogurt at them. Jeez. And then they all got arrested. He he got arrested I think for the assault or whatever. They got arrested for not wearing hijabs. And as an American, I sit there and I go, "Oh, this is really it's a startling story and I go oh it's kind of unfathomable like you can get arrested for not wearing a hijab but go with me here for a minute because I've really been thinking about this now because of Nicole and Mahmoud and this story if we were at the beach mm -hmm. you and I were at the beach and I walked into a coffee shop to get a coffee with just my bathing suit on no shirt I'd get my coffee and I'd leave if you walked into that same coffee shop with just your bottoms on no top, you'd get arrested or a ticket at the very least in most states. Some states now allow women yeah. to go topless, but Florida, no. No. Tennessee, no. Texas, like there's a lot of states where you can't walk into a store topless. So I'm going, that's crazy. They're arrested because they weren't wearing their hijabs. But in America, we almost do the same thing, but different. Uh, I wouldn't compare those two. Also, Iran is very, very extreme when it comes mm -hmm. to these things. Yeah. So it's nothing like Egypt. I don't think, I don't think she, well, she's also American, but I don't think you would get arrested in Egypt, and, and, but I might be wrong. And so, I don't think so. So the reason I'm thinking about it more and more is because, because this is happening in Iran, there are so many women standing up and protesting saying, I don't want to wear that job. And so... Nicole's American. She doesn't want to wear it. Got it. But there's so many women who whose culture it is, whose religion it is, who don't want to wear the hijab. So I know you're saying, oh, it's culture, it's religion. Well, even women within that religion are pushing back on it. And I totally, it. I get that. I get that. But like for her, it's like she cannot protest something she hasn't signed, even tried. And, and that she signed up for. Yeah. Like she, yes. It wasn't like, I don't think... 
Mahmoud was saying, no, nah, you don't have to. You can wear short sleeves and, and show your hair. I think he was who he is the entire time. Yeah. And she's almost trying to get one over on him if she said, okay, I'll do all that. And now she's not. And she was wearing it. She was doing it. There are photos from when she was there before. Mm -hmm. And she just didn't like it and said, well, I don't want to do this. And now that's why they have this ongoing fight. Well, if you don't like it, why don't you move to the U.S.? Then you can have the fight saying, well, I don't have to do it here. Like this is not the culture. I don't have to. Yeah. So things are a little tense. Brother Ahmed basically says, just stop talking right now. You guys are both heated. Stop talking. Calm down. Everything will be fixed. He's like stupid two little kids. (laughs) Which is wise words, right? (laughs) Never try to solve your problems when you guys are both heated. Walk away. Calm down. It'll be fixed. And Ahmed's like, Nicole's a queen. And you need to stand up and say sorry to Nicole right now. And Mahmoud does. He's well, like, he's like a kid because he's like, stand up. <laughs> he's like, and no, Nicole, like, say sorry to me. Stand up and say, say I'm sorry. Yeah. And so he did. He's like, I'm sorry, honey. I love you. And she's like, I love you too, but. Oh, oh boy. Like, I- I'm very curious to see how this is going to end up. But they went home. Mm-hmm. And the next day, they actually went out hanging out with Ahmed and his wife. I love a little couples, couples date night. And a kid. And, and yeah, the, the child playing, playing board games, hanging out at the cafe. And I think Nicole enjoyed this. This was, I don't want to say normalcy in the sense that there was no normalcy prior to this. I mean, going to the pool, that was normal. I just mean, they're not in that pink room arguing with mom <laughs> eavesdropping, right? This was a normal <laughs> night out for a couple going, playing games, chatting, and Nicole had Fatma there. Yeah. Right? So she got to pick her brain a little bit and wondered, oh, did you always wear a scarf? Did you drink? Well, and Fatma said, well, we lived in China for a few years, so I didn't have to because it's not normal there. Right. But she goes like, I do it here, but I don't like it. But I don't like it. But she does it. But she does it. And I guess, you know, you respect the culture. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Does Ahmed always respect the culture? He does not. Oh, he loves. He's like, I love tequila. I love, tequila. Oh, you, you used to drink with your dad? Nicole, I love, have you ever I had love tequila. Te- love tequila. You ever have a little Patron, a little Cafe Patron, Nicole? Because <laughs> I love to. Oh, don't don't tell mom. I love tequila. This was like, because Mahmoud didn't know that. Ma- Mahmoud is so shocked. Mahmoud didn't know <laughs> that his brother drank. And it's so funny because I can relate to this. This is, this is, you don't have a sibling, but the first time I learned that my sister got drunk or my sister smoked weed, I'm four years younger and I'm like, what? I always thought like, we're so innocent. We're so, and then you find out that, oh my gosh, wait, you, you drank, you smoked. And then it was watching Mahmoud react. I was like, I know what he's doing. I know what he's going through. Well, but for them... It's like your sister, it's okay if she drinks and smokes sweet. Sorry, Rachel. No, but, but, but I'm saying for she them, was, it's forbidden. Well, it's forbidden here too when you're 19 or 18. <laughs> I know it's America. So move to Europe. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? So when you found out that your sister drank underage, I'm speaking third person, I was like, wait, what? She did? Oh my gosh. And I couldn't believe it. And I, I'm just saying, I understand what Mahmoud was feeling. Okay, got in it. That, in that well, moment. Mahmoud is like, everyone can make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Nicole keeps making them. And, uh, so far, uh, I'm okay. Not okay, but he's like, so far, what's the word? Like, he forgives her, but she needs to stop making mistakes. Well, what I liked, Ahmed said, Muslim is not angel. I think he was just trying to say, you know, as Muslims, we're not yeah. angels. But we always try to become better. And that's just life. You should always just try to improve. Now, I don't necessarily agree that cutting out drinking totally. Well, the, but again, a, it goes back to the culture. It's I know, like, I know. That's what they're used to. They grew up learning this like they know and unless you're okay with adapting to this like um what's her name avery avery yeah who will literally she does she wears the hijab she covers herself she prays she fully accepted it sure then then don't do it no one's forcing you to i get you you love him you don't love him you met at the freaking fabric store like you maybe liked how he looked maybe you had a good sexy time but that that, that's it Mm. like if you can't accept it 
it's okay. That's not who you are. But you yeah. have to move on, not to push anyone's buttons because you'll lose. You'll either need to cave in and start wearing it so and accept whatever you signed up for or leave. Especially when, for one partner, religion is such a big aspect. Like, it's one thing if, okay, I'm Jewish, you're what? No, Christian? I'm a, an atheist. And neither of us are that into it. And it's like, okay, we can kind of play the parts. We'll go celebrate Christmas. You'll come and we'll celebrate Hanukkah. And it's like, not a big deal either way. But if one of us was super orthodox. I would not, I, I could not do that. No. And and I would not expect you to. But that's when it becomes an issue. And for Mahmoud, he's basically, he's pretty orthodox. And so there is no like half-assing no. This, this religion. So Ahmed tells Nicole and Mahmoud, just relax, try to start fresh and see how it goes. And I have friends who married Jewish guys who are very religious and they had to convert sure. and do all that thing. And sure. No, I, I believe it. I believe it. So I like traditions. That's why I like mm-hmm. celebrating Christmas. I like celebrating Hanukkah. I like celebrating Thanksgiving. I like. I used to celebrate Easter. We don't yeah. do it anymore. But like we did Passover a few years back. Yeah. But like it is a tradition. I take the religion out of we it. We take God out of it. Yeah. It's just family coming together. Yeah. Doing, yeah. Doing but it's how we do. I don't judge anyone or anything. Ah. But Nicole, Nicole signed up for something she didn't research. She did something that she shouldn't have done without really learning about she, it. And, and she doesn't respect it. She doesn't respect it. Which is it. the worst part. It's not even like, oh, okay. Like, she's actively disrespecting Yeah. It. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Yes. Isabel and Gabe, I was, woo, I was biting my nails waiting for this. Yes, but I, I also have other questions like Gabe. Because, so, we picked up where we left off. Gabe just came out to her parents, and it's crickets. You could cut the tension with a butter knife yes but dad is like well i I want to know the whole story with details and i like this yes questions are good yes so that's what i'm saying and and maybe i'm wrong maybe you can't ask questions i don't know but in my mind being curious showing interest that's always good yes and so gabe kind of explains everything and parents are anxious but because they don't know a lot about this topic Mm -hmm. and you know for mom she's like it's it's what's about on the, it's about what's on the inside and we still love yeah. you. And dad said, Well, maybe you can explain more later, but you're still welcome in at my home. We're still friends. And so seems to be great. The the best reaction that I thought dad had was after Gabe explains a little bit about how he has been transitioning for ten years and I didn't feel like a woman and not normally I don't tell anyone, but I want your parents and I want you to see who I really am. Dad was speechless. But then he finally goes, okay, Isabel, how did you react when you found out? And I was like, I don't know if that's a good question or not, but for me, it's such a good question because if nothing else, it's saying, Isabel, this is really the only person that really should impact is you. Yeah. And so I want to know my daughter, how did you react? And if you, and I, I support your reaction fully. And her response was, well, I accepted Gabe when he told me. Yeah. And that should be it. Okay. If you accept him, then I accept him. And so I really liked when he asked that question. Yeah, um, that was good. And so I think he's shocked. I think dad's shocked, but they hug it out. Yes. They hug it out. And it was, I don't know if you picked up on this and I might be totally wrong, but when they hugged, they didn't like hug, like their, like they, like their bottoms were yeah. far apart. They like yeah. the tops hug. I, I do like, that too though. And I feel bad about it. I watch some people, I have hug envy. I watch some I people. I hate when people hug me. I like I, a good I like hug. What, I like when you hug me. I like a good hug. But I also stick my butt out, sort of like when really? I sort of like when I shower and check, I stick my butt out. <laughs> and other people get right up in their, you know, crotch to crotch. And I go, that's <laughs> that's a nice hug. That's that's a real <laughs> loving hug. Whereas me, it feels like strangers hugging. I don't like hugging people. I really truly don't. I like hugging you. I, I like hugging my parents and your parents, grandma. Sure, I'll do the hug. Although Grandma touches my face, which I hate. Why? Any grandparents listening right now? 
Just stop with the face touching. I I absolutely what is it? hate it. If you have, I don't mind an ear grab, a good no, old, a good old fashioned ear grab. Don't touch my face. But everyone's pinching cheeks. No, like Rubbing. my grandma rubs my face, and right before she blows her nose. Uh, but, uh, I don't understand the face touch. I love my grandma, but like I hate the face touch. No, my both my grandparents did the same thing. Hate it. Yeah. But what I was talking about? You were saying the hug butt out. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I like don't like when people hug. I really don't. Oh. Like if you don't know me, like say if I meet someone for the first time or I say hi, I, I can shake your hand, but don't hug me. I don't mind a hug. You, I remember like meeting some of your coworkers for the first time. They all hugged me. And I yeah. was like, I just, I get uncomfortable hugging people. And yeah. not just like it was an example of. Whoever knew I meet, I just don't like the hugging. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Guys, if you meet me, don't hug me. I'll, you guys can hug me, <laughs> but I'll have my butt stuck out. Um, then new day, the next morning, Gabe wants to have a little chat with Isabel because he feels good about the conversations he had with the parents, but he wonders if, was it too good to be true? Well, he wonders because they are religious and he says, I've never had a positive experience with religious people who who would say, oh, but that's what that's what it was meant to. God is the only who can judge us. You're accepted as the way you are. Like he's never heard this before. So now Gabe is questioning if what his parents said was real. Yeah. And and he wants to talk to Isabel's mom again. And I don't know how I feel about this. I come from the school of thought. Once you've made the sale, stop selling. Yeah. And in my mind, he's made the sale. He explained himself. He got the hug. He was told it's what's on the inside that counts. Stop. Stop selling. Yeah. But this is Gabe's life. He'll do what he wants to do. Until then, we go to the pottery studio. Smash it like it's as hot as this pottery studio. That was a really nice pottery studio. Like all the plates on the walls. It was really cool. It's very nice. So Gabe is there with Sarah, Isabel's daughter, Sarah, and Isabel's son, Miguel. And this is big. Gabe wanted to bring them all together because he wants to tell them that he's going to propose to their mom. Also, he needs to make the plate. So So this proposal is going to be a plate that says, will you marry me? With the ring on it. Yes. And then like a tea cup over the ring. I hope not because it still says, will you marry me? Oh, but then you can unveil the ring. Which I don't understand because it's not really a surprise. I guess there's a surprise. Oh, there's a ring under there. But around the cup, yeah. you can see, will you marry I me? I think it's nice. I think it's an, it's, a, it's thoughtful it's and thoughtful. he made it. It's thoughtful. And the kids love Gabe. So they're happy for them. They're of course. Everyone's pumped. And they see him more at, 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 at least Sierra. Sees Gabe more as a friend than a father, which is mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. I'm sure Miguel will probably see him more as a father figure. Maybe until... he's a little younger. Uh, yeah. Give Miguel yeah. 10 years. Did you see what Miguel was painting on his plate? No. Could be wrong. Pretty sure it's the TikTok logo. Ooh. Well, I mean, he's in the age, I, I know. guess. I know. I thought it was fast. I think so. It looked like the TikTok logo. But yeah, so that's the plan. He's going to propose. And then... Back at home, Isabel's with her mom, and she's doing a little reconnaissance. She's asking if dad said anything after Gabriel talked to them, and we learn dad was a little surprised, and he wants to continue to speak to Gabe more. And again, I don't think this is bad. I don't think talking is bad. I think silence is bad. If if dad gave Gabe the silent treatment, yeah. that'd be bad. Wanting to talk to him, I think is good. Yeah, for sure. I think it's good. All right. Next. Ooh, how many do we have left? Two. All right. Jen and Rishi. So Jen is home in Oklahoma for almost three months. It's been three months, yeah. Okay. I would love to know what does she do for a living? She flexed with the two master degrees uh, good for her i think i saw but what do you do besides spraying whatever's killing bees yeah killing bees like what did you do i think i saw somewhere i didn't i don't know if it was very she must be working from home because probably because probably. she's um yeah she's always on the farm she's like oh farm live oklahoma oklahoma guys if, if you're not on the family affair level the patreon 
then you don't know that our new, new favorite show is Farmer Seeks a Wife. Guys. We are all caught up on that. And it's a fantastic show. We didn't finish the last episode. Oh, we still have, oh, we, yeah, yeah, we had to watch yeah. 90. Um, check it out. Check out Farmer Wants a Wife on Hulu or Fox. So good. So good. It's Anyways. Too good. Okay. Um, so Jen, yeah, Jen's home. Good news. Her visa has been reinstated for 10 years. So she's going to go back in a few weeks. But those are still the visa. That they, I don't know what these rules are, but America also has 10 year visa that my parents were on. Not anymore. They expired and you could be in the U.S. for six months at a time. Okay. Well, I wonder what these, what this deal is because these are Indian visa for well, 10 years. Doesn't mean she can be there for 10 years. Yeah. I don't think Jen knows either way. I don't think she did her research on this one either. Yeah. Well, again, there must be a rule that you basically need to leave and come back. So hopefully she'll follow those rules. So the plan is she's going to go back in a couple of weeks. She wants to let her friends know. So she Skypes in Randy and Myra, who are not totally on board with this plan. Oh, my gosh. Randy is such a, such a hoe. Randy is the biggest hoe that's ever been on 90 Day Randy Fiance. thinks she, she's so hot. Randy's like, really? You're going to go back to India? Like, I don't know. He, he seems a little shady. And Jen's she, like, he hasn't done anything shady. She's like, well, by the way, like, you know, like when I was like talking to him and I was like, send me a pig. And so he sent me this like half naked pig. And then I told him I'm an, I'm, I'm, I'm an international mode, mo- model and we're like making plans to meet. And he literally stopped talking to me when he realized that you're my friend. It's like, is that why he stopped talking to you, Randy? Randy's a Muppet. She, she, oh my gosh, she's a hoe. Randy, okay, the photo, well, first of all, Randy screenshots yeah. what was sent to her, and then she sends it to Jen, and you can see that Randy was coaxing this out of Rishi. Rishi wasn't just like, oh, hey, baby, check this photo. Yeah. Randy's like, send me a photo. Send me, and so he did, I guess. But here's the thing, I would hope that if, some girl messages you and say, hey, John, send me send me a photo that you would be like, uh, absolutely fucking not. But if I'm she's married, like, goodbye. But, Rishi is like going through his photos trying to find the best but one. But that's the thing right there, which is why I don't think it's that incriminating. If she says, oh, I'm in the modeling world, I'm going to be in India, send me a photo. He sent her basically a headshot. He didn't send her a shirtless selfie this was like a professional photo that he sent her. Yeah, but still. No, it would be if if he was laying in bed and sent a shirtless selfie, I would go, cancel the plane ticket. This is bad. Okay, he, so, he sent, so he sent a photo that's on his Instagram wall, I'm sure, on his Instagram page. Well, okay, so if uh, someone asked me for a photo and I sent him a photo in bikini that someone else took, I didn't take, that's okay. If you as were long as I don't selfie it, that's okay. If you were a model and someone said, hey, I'm in the modeling business. Are you saying I'm not a model? <laughs> when's the last time someone paid for your photos? <laughs> Never. Yes, okay, so you're not a model. <laughs> it's, look, it's not good, but it'd be way worse if he sent a shirtless selfie. That's, I think that's, that's like right. pretty bad. That's where I'm coming from. It's not good. It's not well, good. Uh, or he should have said, if that's on his Instagram, he should have said, like, give me a follow and you'll, you'll see what I look like. I think those photos were, like, for all we know, Randy screenshotted one of those photos and was like, yeah, this is the one he sent me. It's like, don't. Well, you could see the conversation. Like, it was within a conversation. I guess you're right. To me, it's not, it's not good, but it's not as bad as it could have been. Oh, I think it's bad. Jen doesn't seem to think it's that bad. Jen's like, I'm still going to go. I guess I'll I'll confront them when I'm there. I honestly think even if he sent her a photo of his face, that's still bad. Like, why would you want to have this girl to look at? Like, why do you care? Like, that's you should not be sending any photos to anyone. Period. Again, it it no. Does, we need, you cannot win this fight. I'm not trying to win the fight. I'm trying to understand the circumstance because let's oh, go back I'll to what we said. Oh, I'll tell you exactly what it no, what it context is. Context is everything. And so if she said. I'm a modeling agent. I'm going to be in. Oh, she didn't say that. She's, I'm a model. Yeah. She's, I'm a model. I'll well, yeah, be in then, Jaipur. Then you know right there that she's lying. I don't know. Unless maybe, maybe, her. maybe he found her attractive. Who knows? He, maybe she used different photos. Maybe she did. I mean, who knows? But she said, I'm a model. Not, not I'm a modeling agent. Probably a hand model like Darcy's friend. 
<laughs> she said, I'm a model. I want to meet you. And they were making plans. I'm, I promise you that Rishi is talking to girls every single day, whether she's in, the, she's in India or not, because he knows he looks good. He knows he has the longest hair in the whole town. He I like know- Deer's hair better, but okay. He knows. Okay. He knows. Kushi knows. Yeah. Cut to India where Rishi's with his friend Kushi. Which is reassuring about what I just said. Oh, yeah. But he, okay. Yeah. I was just going to say, Kushi, who's his friend, a female friend, says, I don't buy that you don't cheat on her. You go out to clubs with us, we drink, and you disappear for hours. That's not Where good. do you go? That's not good and at he, all. And he couldn't even answer. He's like, well, like, I'm still there. She's like, no. Like that's she, not good. If his female friend says, I feel bad for Jen, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Kushi is all of us where when she's like, you know, you need to tell your parents. She's giving up everything. Yeah. She's coming here. You haven't even told your family. You should probably do that. And Rishi's like, well, she's waited two years. What's a few more months? It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Well, she's on the way because she's home. She packed up after four months in Oklahoma and she's heading to the airport. But you can tell that it bothers her because her sister-in-law, Tara, is driving her. Thirsty Tara. Oh, yeah. And so she's going to tell her. Tara's and- like, so you're going to bang when you get there? Like, you're going to bang in the cab? You're going to wait till you get to the hotel? And Jen's like, well, abstinence is still the plan, especially because Randy got a shirtless pic from Rishi. And Tara's like, I must see. Tara's like. Um, what, what, um, show can, me and then can you, can you show, send it? Can you text me that photo immediately? <laughs> yeah. Thirsty well, Tara. Well, she's shocked. She's like, I would not be flying to India. I would not either, but well, I also would have called Rishi and confronted him over the phone. Oh yeah. And not waited to get there in person and do it. And here's the thing. If Rishi lived in Ohio and she lives in Oklahoma Maybe I would try to confront him in person. Sure. But he lives in India. Plus a six hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I definitely, I would have called first. Yeah. Um, apparently, Tara's car doesn't have reverse because they just keep heading to the airport. Yeah. And so a very emotional goodbye. And she's off to India once again. Yes. Okay. Now for the most surprising segment. Of the episode. It's Chris's and Jamie's wedding day. I did not see this coming, Teresa. Me neither. I thought she's going to flee back to Alabama, which I still think she will. For my rare motorcycle. <laughs> I wish she came into the wedding on her rare motorcycle. That would be an entrance. But didn't someone banged it up? I think someone stole her rare motorcycle. Oh, there's probably rare motorcycles in Colombia. Well, okay. <laughs> it's the wedding day. And so they met the wedding planner, each getting ready in their rooms, and the friends, Alex and Leo, are going to do hair and makeup. Jamie's friends are like the glam squad. Yes. They each, they split, and Mm -hmm. one takes Jamie, one takes Chris. Yeah, and they switch because I think one does makeup, one does hair. Mm -hmm. And Chris, for the first time ever, looks decent. Take it back. Not the dress, her face. Her face and the hair. I couldn't even look at her face. Her, she, okay, she's wearing her mom's wedding dress. Very sweet. But she looks like a Victorian ghost. She does look like a ghost. I'm going to have nightmares. I had, I've had i been having nightmares about her for eight episodes. I'm really going to. I'm going to have night terrors now. I thought that her her makeup and her hair with the flowers, that looked good. Oh, terrible. She looks like a... Terrible. Like the day of the dead. Uh-huh. They have flowers. Uh-huh. It wasn't good. You like it because it's very bohemian. There's that one holiday in Czech where you guys all wear flowers on your head and dance yeah. around and drink. Yeah. Well, that's not why I like that. I just think this is the first time I'm like, all right, like a couple of hours of work and she can look okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, they do a first look. Man, do opposites attract, I guess. Jamie looks great. Jamie's beautiful. And Chris... Here's my here's what I worried about. I think the dress smelled. I can oh, like yeah. smell the dress oh. because I doubt that she oh. dry cleaned it. Oh. I like one hundred percent doubt that 
she did anything with it. Yeah. And imagine a 50-year-old dress that was sitting somewhere in the box. What do you think it smells like? Like something old. Like envelopes? Like like your grandma's clothes or my grandma's clothes. How dare you Not my, my grandma living like grandma. That. Just like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not good. So then the family Skype in. Star couldn't make it. Star had a test or something. <laughs> uh, at least someone's going to school. And the wedding begins. They decided to do the entire ceremony in Spanish. Which, I, I, okay, I, I get if uh, the ceremony itself is in Spanish, but Jamie reciting her vows in Spanish. And I mean, yes, and Chris yeah. is staring at her, not knowing what's going on. Come on. Chris like, is like, I don't even, I don't need to understand the words. I just feel the emotions. She's like, I just want to be a citizen so I can keep getting free drugs. Mm-hmm. Chris does her vows in English, though. Yeah, of and then course. They, then they smooch. Mm-hmm. And did you see, I, I'm not sure which of Jamie's friends it was, but he was wearing a hoodie and oh, jeans. Yeah. He was wearing a hoodie and jeans. Yeah. Put a little respect on this wedding, sir. Yeah. Because it was a nice wedding. Yeah. It was a pretty good wedding. It was a I pretty mean, good wedding. I mean, Chris was wearing an old smelly dress, so. <laughs> but she still <laughs> stepped it up. I you guess. see what she normally wears. <laughs> she stepped it up. Well, long story, long story short, they said C to each other and they're married. Yeah. Wild. I, I did not I see this. No. But what I saw in the previews, I'm like, holy shit. Like, they're going to buy a food truck. Oh, yeah. For $20,000. Yeah. Like, it's like this like, zombie bus. Oh, man. I, I, I don't know. But who's going to make the food? I don't know. I'm here for it. I'm here for it too. I already thought that they'll get in the fight before she's gonna go back to Alabama. But I think she will go back to Alabama at some at some point, and they're gonna fight. But I'm gonna buy a rare bus and turn it into a food <laughs> truck. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be good. The season is so good. So good. So good, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying it. That's the episode. So make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married Reality Pod. Make sure you check out the Patreon if you're into that, if you want some more content. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality for Darcy and Stacy and Seeking Brother Husband. That is a real show. Also, thank you again for the reviews. We love when you guys send us reviews, and we couldn't be more thankful for your review, Cabrita. Cabrita said love it. She joined the Patreon, so we love that. She appreciates the hard work. Keep up the positivity. Wonderfully energetic pod. I love it. Thank you, Cabrita. Thank you, Cabrita. Smash it like it's as hot as the review. You got that right. All right. I think I've said it all. I've said too much. You usually do that. Um, all right. Well, I told everyone how I shower and check. So I told everyone how I shower and check. All right. And that's where I we'll think, leave it, I think. I think this is this was very, very mm-hmm. personal episode. It's a very personal episode. All right. Let's leave it there. All, all right. right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.